Today we're building a horse. That's right, friends. McFarlane and the Dark Knight Returns go together like, like, well, like McFarlane and the Dark Knight Returns. They go together super good, is what I'm trying to say. And I'm surprised it's taken McFarlane this long to make figures based on that comic book. But here they are. And since Joker is the first figure in the wave, let's start with a look at him. Now, Joker shows up in a few variations in the Dark Knight Returns comic. First in a suit sort of like this in his talk show host appearance. You can see right there. And uh, you can see it's definitely got the texture from that appearance. Then he's in a pinstripe suit when he goes to see Selena Kyle at her service. And finally, he's in an all-white suit, which is most like this one, uh, during the fight with Batman at the carnival. Now, that suit did not have this texture. So um, McFarlane has done some strange amalgamation of like uh, the colors from the third suit he wears. I mean, third suit suit, not counting like the hospital gown from earlier in the comic. And the first suit, which has this texture, but totally different colors, which is like a, you know, more of a gray jacket and dark gray pants and all that. Uh, but both of them have purple undershirts and white ties, the first and second suit, not the pinstripe one, I don't think. So that is kind of accurate. I mean, the colors are totally accurate to the final fight appearance, but, you know, during that fight, he ended up battering in the ass, and I'm get them, but whatever, I digress. They sculpted the tie like it's billowing in the wind, even though I don't think that ever happens in any panel in the comic, and you can kind of tuck it in to the coat since they're both separate pieces there. So that's kind of cool. I do like the texture. Um, if they were going for the talk show host appearance, like, it's begging for a wash to bring it out. But, you know, that's a paint thing. I mean, it's got a nice little fold sculpted in there and um, really matches the hard plastic arms. Like, you can't even tell from looking that it's different materials, but if you touch it, you can really, really feel. And then the gloves, um, it's kind of weird how the gloves are, like, the same color as the pants. I mean, I guess we may as well start talking about the paint, but, I mean, more on the sculpt, like, that head sculpt. I'm not sure about it being parted down the middle. His hair, it looks a little weird. It looks a little, uh... You know, like the Hulk hairs he sometimes has, but, uh, you know, believe it or not, it's kind of close to the comic book. Like, we don't usually see it from the top, so you don't really notice it's parted, but the front, it should have some more curls. That's the issue. It's like straight hanging down, whereas in the comic, it's just a little more... The, the art style leaves a lot more to the imagination, maybe, so that might be it. The face, however, I don't know why they're going with the laughing face. Like, it's almost like his death face, where he's got the death grin kind of except no battering in the eye, so it's not that. So I don't know what this is, like, because most of the comic, he's not smiling and laughing like this. But, you know, obviously the Joker is famous for doing that, so it works well enough. And I like the sculpted lines in the suit, pants there, shoes, well, feet look kind of tiny, but, you know, I think that all's down Frank Miller's artwork where it's like, humans have, like, giant proportions in the limbs and stuff and the hands and the feet. I mean, his hands are kind of big, so I don't, I don't know what the excuse is there, but the Joker just kind of has tiny feet. Anyways, paintwork on the face is all right. It's kind of hard to tell, but uh, I feel like the right eye on mine is uh, tampoed on a little high, like it's on the underside of his uh, brow ridge thing going on there, not really in there where the eye is meant to be, like the left one is. But honestly, there's so much makeup in the eyes and stuff, you can't really even tell, because it usually just looks like a dark mess when you're looking at him from any kind of distance more than, you know, like an inch away. Mouth! I like how the teeth are sculpted, uh, <laughs> but uh, paint paint's kind of sloppy on the mouth. I mean, Joker did his own lipstick, so I guess it's, he should have gotten that uh, professional makeup artist to do it, like in the comic, but he had his own, so he wanted to do it himself. On the body, pretty much no paint to speak of. I mean, everything's just uh, sculpted in the color it's supposed to be in, except maybe a little bit of purple. Yeah, just this little bit of purple to represent the undershirt on the wrist there. That's it. Paint's on the face. That's mostly all right. I think there's a few odd choices with the sculpt, namely doing texture on the jacket here and, you know, the open mouth expression, but otherwise Joker's all right. Next up in the wave, Carrie Kelly, Robin, and McFarlane got it spot on. Everything is perfect. I mean, I may, maybe I'd prefer like a neutral sculpt for the cape instead of like building in the lane, but darn if this don't look cool, and I think it'll look fine enough on the shelf. So yeah, they definitely got that, and they've got a lot of cool lines in it too, so that looks awesome, even if, you know, some people like it just to be straight, flat, hand down. But I mean, everything's sculpted correctly, like the R is raised detail, and it's kind of huge. Like, uh, it doesn't look that big in some of the panels in the comic, but like, uh, look at this, you know, cover right here. Uh, they definitely got it. It's, it's definitely accurate enough. All these things are sculpted on. Uh, just pretty much awesome, awesome sculpt all around. I love the hair on her head. Like, wow, that's a 80s do, and possibly long <laughs> pompadour-esque uh, comb over for a preteen girl or teenage girl. How old is Carrie? I, I don't remember. She's like young, though. She's like 13 or something, right? I love the translucent glasses they gave her. And yes, the, even the side of them 
which is accurate to the comic. Everything's accurate to the comic, 100% on this, as far as I can tell. The paint is spot on, no slop on that R. The lipstick, I think there's even a cool little wash in the hair. Just really, really good all around on this. I mean, I can't think of anything to complain about, uh, except in terms of the sculpt, those balls on the ankles, and then again, uh, McFarlane likes his tiny feet. I guess at least on girl it makes more sense, but like, uh, <laughs> those uh, ball ankles uh, sure are a little distracting, but I mean, it's a sacrifice for articulation, I guess. I do notice she's sculpted with slightly open mouth, though. This this gonna be a trend, McFarlane? Yeah, looks like it is. Batman, who is, you know, quite obviously very stoic and has his mouth closed for the vast majority of the comic, has a big old angry snarl on his face. I mean, you know, at least the teeth are sculpted and painted very well. You can, like, make out individual teeth there. It's a lot more, uh high resolution than the Joker's teeth, which, you know, themselves are not bad, so the teeth are done well, at least, and the dimple on the chin there is pretty good, too, and the bat symbol has texture. This is a very good sculpt for Batman. I mean, look at all those wrinkles in the legs and stuff, and the torso, like, it's just like Wrinkle City up there. The cape is rubber, and it's way more neutral than Robin, so it's like, you know, pose them together. It's gonna kind of be like, well, her cape is swept in the wind, and Batman's isn't, so wind only affects one of them. Good choice, McFarlane. I mean, just, this is why people want neutral capes, like, so you can, you know, pose them together and it looks natural, because it's like, why isn't the wind blowing this cape the same direction if, you know, whatever, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but, you know, comic books rarely do. So sculpt, full on, excellent on Batman, nothing missing. I mean, I remember, like, one panel in the comic, he has, like, a little strap down here around the shin, but, like, uh, it's not there, the majority of the comics, so they got pretty much everything right. They got the pouch built, um, although colors. So, in The Dark Knight Returns, um, Batman starts off with, a blue costume, you know, blue-gray, with a yellow bat oval, and uh, then later he switches to the just black bat symbol with a darker color scheme. In some panels, it looks like the cape and the mask and the boots and the gloves are, like, just a darker gray than the bodysuit, while the bat symbol and the trunks remain black. Uh, however, in most panels, uh, everything's just black, pretty much. So, uh, not gonna fault McFarlane on accuracy. It's accurate to most of the comic, you know, it's more accurate than, more consistent than Frank Miller was with his own art, I guess. However, the pouches, uh, most of the time, they're pretty darn yellow in the comic. I didn't see many panels. I mean, I saw some panels where they look, uh, honestly, kind of like a bright white or very light gray, even. Never so much this uh, dark brown, but, you know, uh, I don't think that's a big deal, really. Paint is darn clean everywhere. I mean, most things are just molded what they need to be. The belt could use a wash or something. It's just molded brown for the most part. I mean... If there's a wash, it's just like way too subtle for me to notice. The face is where the paint really excels. Like, that's a nice flesh tone, good lips, clean teeth. Not much else to say about sculpt and paint. Batman's pretty good. Although he's got an open mouth. Now, figure number four out of four, which would make the last one, unless you count the horse, which will build. And we'll get to accessories, because technically accessories, it's Superman, and, uh. Well, he's got a face. I mean, that open mouth look ain't doing him favors, McFarlane, honestly. I mean, I guess there are some panels where his face looks kind of like this, uh, but uh, that was a pretty fugly Superman face, if I'm being honest. Now, I can see this sort of high cheekbone, very wrinkly, Ronald Reagan-esque 80s face working for Superman. Uh, if his eyes are squinted and his mouth is closed, darn it! What is with the open mouths, McFarlane? Every single character had open mouths in Comic Sans for Joker, but not really anybody else, honestly. I mean, <sighs> show me the panel. I guess there are some panels where... He kind of looks like this, if you look at Frank Miller's art. And uh, I guess it most looks like the one where he's surprised catching an arrow from a green arrow there. And like, uh, yeah, Frank Miller's art did look kind of weird when he had his mouth agape also. But that's what I'm saying. Don't do the mouth agape like that. Just, you know, close it up. I don't know, the rest of the sculpt's pretty awesome. I mean, the body looks great. It's got wrinkles everywhere. This S is huge. It's raised. It's sculpted. It's awesome. The abs are a little funky the way they're sculpted and the way they work with the articulation because like, uh, he tends to do that super easy, and then the abs look weird, but, you know, you just correct it by playing with the articulation, although it's a little stiff, because uh, you don't want to come forward on the upper torso on that part of the joint at all, really. Yeah, very good Superman sculpt, very beefy. Um, the head is going to be pretty much take it or leave it for a lot of people, I feel, but you know what? Frank Miller's artwork is kind of like that, too, honestly. So I guess they're pretty accurate to the source material, in terms of the sculpt, at least. In terms of the paint, the S is super clean. The face is fine. I mean, the eyes and the teeth are painted cleanly enough. I mean, even the lips, too. Big problem is the belt. So, um, well, first of all, if we're talking about the belt, the sculpt, uh, I don't see Superman having the circle on this panel, but, you know, take a look at that here. He definitely does. So, I mean, again, Frank Miller wasn't 100% consistent. 
don't expect 100% accuracy if uh, the artist is not 100% consistent. What is consistent, though, is, I mean, look at that panel. Belt loops are supposed to be red. Now, what gives, McFarlane? You could paint the belt loops red on this, or actually you're painting the whole belt black because that's not a separate piece, but, like, what the heck? Just paint them red because the... Actually, this is all part of the rubber diaper, which is molded in red. It's not molded in yellow because then you'd be painting all this red. It's molded in red and you painted this yellow. Why didn't you just leave some paint off? It's... Hmm. Well, you know what? I guess it's not as big a deal as I think because, like, as a customizer, I'd think you'd have to paint that red, but I guess you don't. You just got to remove some paint now, actually. Still, McFarlane should have done that for us. Sculpt, pretty good except for the face, honestly. Paint, what the heck is with the extra yellow on the belt loops, but otherwise... Pretty darn perfect. Cape is billowing in the wind, leaving Batman the odd man out. But the sculpt and the paint on all these guys is pretty darn accurate to the comic. Um, except for Joker's jacket there, honestly. But, you know, Frank Miller wasn't 100% consistent. Don't expect my frowing to be. Now articulation. Joker has a ball joint head. It uh, can go so far up, but you can't really do it there because then his fake hair will come off. I mean, it's rubber hair is supposed to be glued on, but I don't think they use enough glue on my figure. Anyways, so far up, so far down, which is not really much. Decent side to side and spins all the way around right there, of course. Shoulders on those McFarlane. Actually, I don't know if they're on butterfly joints because I can't really get in there to tell, but there is a bit of wiggle, so I guess they are. It's just, you know, totally hindered by the suit, and you can't even tell if they're in there for the, because the suit's blocking your vision, and it's not meant to be removed. I guess you could cut it off, but I'm not going to do that, because that'll ruin the figure. Pretty much, they're on ball hinges, and they go so far up above 90, which is fine, and swivel all the way around. He's got double elbows on a suit, which is awesome! I mean, that breaks up the sculpt a little. You see it's textured, and the joint is not, but, you know, there's another reason you shouldn't have textured this darn suit, because it's not accurate, and then it sort of ruins things when you do that, and it could have been a bit better, I think. No bicep swivel is, um, is a big issue. So, you know, that's weird, but then the wrists are on those ball hinges that can get, you know, both lateral and vertical hinged motion depending on how you position the ball. Now there is some kind of torso or waist pivot in there, however, um, ultimately useless because of the big rubber overcoat. Um, swivels though! So there's that. Hips are on McFarlane's C-clamp joints. They can go so far forward, which is decent considering he's got the rubber suit, and so far back, which is very good actually. Disappointing thing though, single hinge ratchety joints and I feel like the joint for the knee is uh, kind of low on this figure but you know then again you know, it goes to Frank Miller art with big burly thighs and tiny baby shins and feet it's, it's a little oddly proportioned uh, it does uh, swivel though but sculpt kind of makes it a little difficult it swivels all the way around ankles are also on those ball joints that can hinge and uh pivot and they get pretty good range honestly there and then we get toe articulation which is not bad and the pin for it is way deep in there so you can't tell it's discolored even though it's like a black metal rod. Carrie Kelly though gets green pin so that's even better. Anywho her head goes even further up um further down decent side to side wow that's the best side to side so far actually and goes all the way around obviously shoulders hinge and swivel and there's a butterfly joint that's green, and it looks great. They, I mean, this is the part where I'd usually say something about McFarlane, like, why don't you just make that green look better? Or red, or something. I don't know. It would look fine as red, too, probably. But, you know, it looks great as is, and it gets good range. Now, there is a bicep swivel where that sleeve ends, so that's good. And she's got double elbows. She's got the best articulation so far. Uh, no swivel at the gauntlet. There's a swivel at the big wrist ball thing, which, um, wow. That's a 90 degree bend on your wrist, which is pretty good articulation, I guess. Now this upper torso is all hard rubber, so it does swivel down there. If there's a joint higher up, um, you can't really tell at all. Then the hips are not on C-clamps, they're on ball joints with sort of C-clamps tucked in there. And uh, they don't really get so much swivel as a result. Double knees though! which is better than what Joker got. I mean, you know, looking at the Joker, I, I really prefer how, like, Marvel Legends does their double knees on their suited figures. Uh, I think it looks better, you know, when they're bent as well, so it's a, it's sort of knock against Joker there and point in Carrie Kelly's favor. Although those ankles look weird, they do get great range, so they got that going for them. And then the toe joint 
does not have a distractingly discolored pin. Carrie Kelly got best articulation so far, I think. Now for Batman, I am noticing that big beefy characters from McFarlane do not get double elbows for some reason, uh, even though they can have double knees, which Joker, even though he's just as big and beefy, can't have, even though he gets the double elbows. Nothing really seems to make sense. Anyways, Batman's head, uh, is probably on the weakest ball joint. It uh, only looks up so far. Down is a bit better. Side to side, it's uh, medium. It's like uh, maybe about as much as Joker, honestly. And it spins all the way around, obviously. The shoulders are on those butterfly cup joint things that McFarlane does. And they can go pretty high up on their hinge right there. No bicep, but he gets a single elbow that swivels. So I guess you don't need the bicep there. Then those ball peg wrists that hinge both directions, but depending on how you Face the ball, obviously. Everybody's got those on McFarlane's line nowadays. Uh, the torso has two ball joints in it. There's a diaphragm ball, but darn it if you'll see they're stuck on mine. I mean, it's not stuck. It can swivel, but uh, that joint doesn't really seem to go down. <laughs> it just barely goes back at all, honestly. It's uh, pretty useless, except for swiveling, honestly. The uh, lower joint gets so much range. It's uh, Batman can't really do crunches, honestly. It's a uh, Kind of just a swivel. I mean, is this one stuck? Is the lower one stuck? Let's do this too. Oh, with great effort, I did manage to turn him at the actual waist instead of the upper torso. But I mean, if you're just swiveling this guy to get a pose, uh, he's pretty much going to swivel at the diaphragm and uh, not the waist. That waist is way too tight, McFarlane. And I don't know what kind of system it's got going on there. Like, um, I don't know. I guess you guys can't really see, but there's there is like some kind of hinge to give it like a bend Batman forward and back along the waist, but it doesn't seem to function at all. And then barely like swivels, like just give us a normal cut joint in there. Eh, maybe the big rubber belt on top is hindering it or something. What's not hindered though? Are those hips and thighs, they're on those C-clamps. You can do the splits so far, kick up so high, which is decent considering the big rubber diaper on top. And they go back, yeah, just enough for my liking. What's awesome though is, Thigh cuts on a McFarlane figure! Hallelujah! 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 <laughs> How long have we been begging for that? And we finally got it. Double knees. Um, he can't really kick his own butt, so I think the range could be a bit better on those. There's no swivel hidden in the boot sculpt, which would have been cool, but there are those, you know, ankle joints, and they're very clicky on Batman here. Anyways, they also pivot, and he's got hinged toe. The coloration is perfect, which I keep mentioning because Superman's is distractingly bad. But that's at the bottom. Let's start at the top. So, a Superman that can mostly look up. It's, it's decent. It's not bad. I've definitely seen worse, especially from Mattel in the Mattel days. He looks down pretty darn good so far. And side to side, very good. Better than Batman, at least. It goes all the way around. Shoulders are on butterflies that are kind of stiff. I don't think they get quite as much range as... Well, now nobody gets as much range as Robin in this wave. She's she's got the best articulation easily. Uh, they hinge up so high, and they can go all the way around, just like Batman. Single hinged elbow that swivels. I mean, I prefer double hinges, but I guess McFarlane didn't want to break up the sculpt. The wrists are on ball hinges that swivel, and they look great. Not least of which because they are mostly tucked under that sleeve, and then they're flesh colored. Thank you, McFarlane. That's how it is done and should be done. Uh, torso looks pretty much the same as Batman, like, except he can actually bend backwards. Now, bending him forwards on that diaphragm is uh, sort of the problem. Uh, at least his waist swivels a lot easier than Batman did. He even gets some back and forth on there, too. For whatever reason, he can do the splits on those C-clamp hips. As good as Carrie Kelly, they come very far forward and go pretty good back, too. Although... Uh, no thigh cuts, but the swivel he gets is pretty decent. I don't know what McFarlane did to loosen up these hips, but uh, they are definitely improving on Superman here. I don't know why he neglected the thigh swivels that Batman got. That's kind of a weird choice, but at least he gets the double knees. I uh, can't quite get his own butt, but maybe I can get that joint further. No, I guess not. It's pretty stuck in there. Again, no cut hidden in the boot, but there is a big ball joint, and you can twist and swivel. Gets very good range. The toe hinge. Why oh why is the toe hinge's peg in there black? I guess because it's like really thin and metal. Um, I wish it were red, obviously, but like I guess black is a better choice than the color that all the other pins were, which is blue. And that would have stuck out like a sore thumb on the red. Eh, it could be worse. Articulation is pretty decent on Superman. At least he can look up. 
Carrie Kelly, definitely best articulation out of the wave. Joker, kind of disappointing because of the lack of the torso, but also Batman because that torso is just pretty much non-functional. Um, decent articulation though, I mean, finally getting thigh swivels, that's definitely something. McFarlane is on the right track here. The packaging, as we saw earlier, is pretty much McFarlane's usual DC Multiverse packaging. Except it advertises the build horse right there on the front at the bottom, and as you can see, the Joker is figure number one in this wave. Carrie Kelly Robin is number two. The man himself, Batman, is number three, which is kind of weird because you think uh, he'd be like number one. And then Superman is number four. Yeah, one, three, and four. We know McFarlane's going to put Superman last, but I, I don't know exactly why Robin is placed up uh, ahead of Batman and all that. I guess it makes sense for Joker, though. I mean, McFarlane loves the dark, deranged, and, you know, killer Joker clowns. Anyways, not much to say about the packaging. We haven't said already. Everyone's got their name on the left side, and their name but bigger on the right side, and then it says the series is Batman Dark Knight Returns up there, but also says Batman Dark Knight Returns in blue down there. Kind of kind of weird to double it up, but, you know, whatever. I guess this is like a special wave for McFarlane, so he had to put it on the top. Also, I, I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to double it up when you think about it. Everyone's back is pretty much the same. We get the... Uh, the little card pictures of the other figures in the wave and instructions on how to build a horse, which we're going to do right now as soon as we can open all these guys up. Huh. You don't even have to cut that sock tie thing. Just, you know, slide that saddle and bridle on out of there. Wow, it's a sock tie around Joker's waist. That is pretty tough to see. And, I don't know, cut Joker's little coat. It's all rubbery. And these accessories are just held in with tape. There we are. Then, as per usual, you gotta get this out for the last couple accessories. Man, this thing's really in there. It's, is it taped in this time? There we are. And rip this plastic to get your collector card and your base out. That packaging's pretty much the same for everybody else. Each character gets one sock tie thing going around the waist. And each horse part does as well. The only exception is Batman, who has extra horse parts to the legs here. And uh, they get a little thin piece of tape, which is uh, honestly kind of just pointless because they just, you know, slide right out. You don't even have to peel that tape off. <laughs> and then he gets tape over his accessories also, which, you know, with this this long ba <laughs> batter, battering uh, bat rope, whatever you want to call it, it's a little useless because uh, it's just barely covering it over there. But I guess you do have to take it out because it doesn't slide out as easily. Ooh, tape on this thing's a little tricky. Same with Batman's hands. I guess he gets the most stuff, because he gets horse thing that has a twist tie, horse thing that has tape, and then two sets of accessories that have tape. Whereas everyone else just gets, uh, well, some of them have two horse parts, but, you know, everyone else has a little bit less tape. And Batman has more, because he's special like that. Now for accessories. Everyone pretty much comes with a collector card and a base. There is the Joker's. It is just a picture of the action figure, and it says the Joker, Batman, the Dark Knight Returns. On the back, we get a little bio if you wish to read. Carrie Kelly has a base. Same one we've seen with all the DC figures, by the way. There's a card, also a picture of the action figure. Everyone's getting a picture of the action figure with the name, and then Batman, the Dark Knight Returns, and a little bio on the back, which you can read for Carrie Kelly Robin if you'd like. Then Batman's is a really cool photo of the figure, actually. I like the red light and the set drop they use. I, I don't know. I shouldn't stop gushing over action figure photography. Here's his biography on the back, which you can read if you want to pause it. And then Superman's card, also a picture of the figure, although they use some Photoshop to make him look like he's floating up there. And then on the back, get a bio for him as well. For the base, everyone has peg holes. Everyone pegs into it just fine, and they can stand on them. Kind of wish Superman came with a flight stand instead of a base, but you know what? He does a lot of brawling on a sidewalk at the end of the book, so I guess it works fine for him to be standing. I don't mind that. Joker comes with two personal accessories, a knife, which he used to fight Batman in the end of the carnival, and then a grippy alternate left hand. Not sure why he comes with an alternate left hand, because, you know, the right hand could have been the normal hand, and then we could have gotten a hand to grip the knife, but the right hand is just meant to grip the knife, although it does pop out like an alternate hand, so even though there's no alternate hand for it included, the left one pops off just fine, and you can put the right graspy grasp one on, I guess, so he can do that when he's having his brawl with Batman. This knife, uh, it's very thick and meaty, just like everyone's bod was in the 80s, but it's also very rubbery, so, uh, I don't know what that says about the masculinity, about the symbol of the knife, as Freud would say. But the hands on this guy are very firm. You know how, like, um, often action figures have soft plastic hands that you can bend the fingers on, and the accessories are kind of firm, and so you can pop them in that way? Ever wonder what it would be like if it was the opposite? Well, uh, 
yeah, it's, it's kind of a nightmare. Like, uh, <laughs> and you gotta squish the knife in, and the knife is just bending left and right, and you can't open the fingers because the hand is such hard plastic. It's, uh, I, I would have reversed this. I would have put some more flexible fingers on the figure and made the knife a little firmer. I don't know why it's such a soft, rubbery plastic, but you can eventually squish it into his hand, and uh, he looks fine holding it, I guess. What we really needed was an alternate head, not an alternate hand, McFarlane. I mean, give us the head with the battering and the eyeball. That would have been awesome. But whatever, I guess some hand is cheaper and easier to do. Kerry Kelly Robin comes with this slingshot, and that's it. I mean, everybody also gets, like, a horse part, but, you know, that's its own figure and not a character specific one. I mean, she doesn't get alternate hands. She gets this giant, you know, it's, it's very silvery, which is kind of weird. Well, I'm looking at the comic right now, though, and, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be silver. Although this handle is supposed to be black, in some of the panels at least. Either way, it's not supposed to be this thick. This is like a ridiculously cartoonish thick handle on the accessory we got here. At least the strap is brown, but it's molded in such a way that it's like loosely dangling. You can't get any poses where she's like aiming it because it's not really a rubbery material. I mean, it's kind of stiff. I mean, you kind of bend it, but it's just going to go back to its original shape. Anyways, th that's all fine. My problem with it is there's no way to like store it on her waist which is what it looks like it's sculpted to be. Uh, and then put it in her hand, seems to be a big old pain because that handle's so thick. But I mean, you can do it because thankfully she's got the squishy, flexible fingers on both of her hands, at least more so than the Joker had. <sighs> I guess she looks decent with it if you just put it down to the side, try to get it like it's, you know, dangling there. And she can be holding this cape with that hand. I mean, why, why give her like the little hand to make it look like she's like holding something to be drawn in the slingshot when you can't do that pose with the slingshot? That's what's kind of weird about it. But whatever, she needed her slingshot. I guess it's an accessory that makes sense for her. Now, Batman gets the best stuff when it comes to accessories, not counting horse parts. He gets two alternate hands, which, you know, Joker only came with one, strangely. And uh, they're both fists, which is kind of awesome because hands on the figure are uh, just sort of loose gripping hands. We can pop them off right now to pop on some fists. Yeah, they look fine. I mean, they're fists and these are gripping hands. What more do you want? A bat rope with a little battering attached. That's what more you want. I mean, you can get it to focus on it. Um, this thing is pre-molded, fortunately. I mean, I don't know. It's fine, I guess. Let's have it get some cool poses out of it with him. Let's, well, let's pop the gripping hands back on so you can actually hold it, I guess. So I guess this is sort of the intended pose for the bat rope thing and, um, this thing could have been executed better because it doesn't really look like a throwing motion, at least not in any pose I've been able to do on it. And then, um, despite how thin this cable is, it's actually very hard to get it into his hands. Like, it's even thicker over here where it's molded to be like two cables bunched up. But I mean, the gap between his thumb and his forefinger on this hand is so small, even this single one has a hard time squishing through it. And then he's got the really stiff, hard plastic hands like the Joker. So that could have been executed a lot better. Um, it's not really a very dynamic puzzle. Like it's just holding it and it's dangling there. It's a lot like Robin's slingshot. Joker's knife might be the better accessory, actually. I mean, even though it's kind of squishy, it's, I, I don't know. Last up, Superman gets hands. Gripping hands, not flying hands. What's going on, McFarlane? These accessories are kind of disappointing, but I guess the real star of the show is the horse, isn't it? So Superman's hands are a little hard to swap out, it would seem. Ah! Wow. Okay, they're a little stiff to pop on, too, honestly, but once you get them on, uh, looks like he's uh, ready to grab something, or he's just relaxed hands, maybe? I don't know. I prefer my Superman with fists, honestly. Or flying hands! Even though this Superman figure didn't come with a flying stand. And I guess this is supposed to be like when he's grappling Batman. Like, I could see this catching a punch. That could work for like an action kind of thing. And that is kind of how Superman was fighting Batman. Like, he was fighting him 100%. He was kind of worried about him, too, in the fight, you know? But, uh, honestly, like, I, I prefer the flying pose hands. This looks like a kung fu ready for martial arts action Superman. It's kind of, kind of weird, kind of disappointing. The accessories... Are decent, I guess they're better than nothing, I mean, right? I mean, that's the best thing I can say about them until we get to... I'm a horse. Where it's a horse, we get a build! I mean, this part's obviously the head, it came with the saddle, and both of those came with the Joker. So, I mean, that's a lot of plastic, honestly, so I guess I can forgive McFarlane for the weak accessories on the personal side of the character front there. Robin came with uh, the horse torso. It's in it's in two halves there. That's whew, These things are huge, and they are hollow, and uh, they make a lot of noise. Batman gets a big bushy tail because he's a horse's ass, I guess. I don't know. And then he gets the front legs of the horse, too. 
Oh, Superman gets the rear legs. Ah, that's, and that's because he's the horse's ass. Because it's McFarlane and Miller, and they don't like Superman as much. Anyways, let's put this horse together. So let's see. Looks like the two halves of the torso sort of slot together. And I think you might have to put this horse head in there first because it doesn't look, it looks like it's got to be pegged in, maybe? Mm -hmm. No, it could slide in. It's got a little clip in there. So let's see. It looks like everything could just slide in fine. If we do this first and just, yeah. And then that could come apart too if you're wrong. So there's no worries there. Okay, that seems good. Seems nice and flush right there. The, uh, the saddle, the saddle don't come apart in any of the straps. So I would slide this thing on before you do the leg. Although I guess you could just take the rear legs and like put them back. Well, depending on how much range the articulation gets. Let's see. This is the, oh wow, look at that saddle, got a bat symbol on it. I should really review the horse after it's assembled though. Let's get this saddle slid on. It can't be as far as it's meant to go. I feel like this should be like way over here, right? Mm, keep... There we go. That's, yeah, yeah. You just got to get it over this big belly the horse has. Okay, tail seems easy enough. Just slide it into the hole the horse has in his rear. Yep, clicks in. Rear legs. Hmm. I, don't know. I mean, it definitely goes there. Doesn't really seem to. Ah, there we go. There's the click. And same thing for the other one. If we can... There we go. Got... It's a little bit uh, squishy when you're trying to spring it on, but it, it clicks after a bit of a force is applied. Now, the front legs seem to be tough. Some people, like, switch them up. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure RQ means... Well, I'm pretty sure R means right. I don't know what the heck Q means, but it's right for the horse's perspective, and this will be left for the horse's perspective, so let's try it that way. And uh, these things can just swivel around, but I'm going to try it assuming that this is the front of the hoof, the way it was in the package, the way it was positioned in the package, and let's try right for right. Let's see if that works. Yep. And left for left. Let's see if that works. No. Uh... Is it just backwards? Does this thing get swiveled at some points? Let's... Okay. So uh, maybe swivel that one around. And we have built a horse. Now the saddle on the horse probably has the most sculpted detail, honestly, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we ever saw his bat symbol uh, on the horse saddle in the actual book. And the bat symbol looks a lot more like the symbol from the Dark Knight movies than it does from the Dark Knight Returns. But, overall, this horse does not stand up. What I was going to say is, he does pretty much look like the horse that Batman rides in the Dark Knight Returns. So, that is a big plus. Sculpted hair, more or less accurate. It was a black horse. They got the colors correct. I like his little eyes, if we can get him in. He's, he's obviously a pretty tall figure since he's a horse, so got to get him in the frame there. And some glossy black on the eye there. The paint is kind of uh, what was that word? fuzzy on the bridle there. And then these parts of the bridle can pop off. So you may want to pop strap on. All right, you know, you want, because, I mean, I guess you could just take the whole thing off if you want a horse without the little uh, stirrup. Whatever this part is called. These are stirrups. What am I saying? The handily holdy part of the bridle where you human rider holds the, in the hairy hands, you know. But if these parts aren't on there, the horse has a big weird ball peg sticking out of his nose so that is not going to work in terms of aesthetics you know rest of the horse doesn't really have any paint i mean he's just molded in the color he needs to be which is black which is fine the mane and the tail are a bit darker it's a good looking horse i mean i would have appreciated paint wash maybe some more details somehow i mean the torso is hollow rotocast so he feels kind of like kind of cheap honestly uh, I, but I don't know if I'd really want him to be heavier. In fact, if I think, if anything, I'd want the legs to be weighted so he'd be uh, easier to keep standing. I wish the legs were a bit further apart, especially in the front, because, like, I mean, this is what I'm worried about. Put these in backwards? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I put left to left, right to right, and all that. But he doesn't get very much stability laterally. Uh, forward and back is, is great stability, as long as you got all the feet on the ground, you know? Anyways, the sculpt and the paint for the horse are fine for the most part, if not for the bridle being a little sloppy on the face there, and him having a hard time keeping his balance in terms of going left to right. And that thing popping off so easily. But in terms of articulation, he has a, kind of a ball joint at the 
upper part of the head. And then he's got this big ratchet thing at the lower neck there. The rear legs, uh, they just they just swivel pretty much. They're on big discs that swivel, and then there's a hinge at the knee ankle thing, and then there's a big ball hinge. And what's interesting about it is like it's got the sculpted detail of the horse fur and body and texture on there, even though it's a you know it's a joint. It's, it's you know we don't see that for human figures, but I guess a horse is a bit different, and it can swivel all the way around, and you know it swivels at the bottom part too, so you can. Get those hooves facing the total wrong direction and get all confused if you prefer. The front legs, they go so far forward, mm, so far back, they're kind of ratchety. Then they hinge forward, which looks kind of unnatural, honestly, and backwards. And then the same ball hinge at the foot, I guess you can use on the hoof. Big hoof. Yeah, thanks, Robert De Niro. With that swivels uh, both top and bottom. Last up, of course, the tail. Um, it's got a ball hinge in there that swivels both ways, so you can get it pretty much in two poses. You can get it up there or down there. If you try to swivel it, the weight of it just brings it back down to the bottom, so it's kind of pointless. Of all the spots to put ratchets, uh, the tail is probably one that needed it because it's not really uh, easy to keep in place. I mean, unless you're going to do it like this where you balance it hanging up there, that, that doesn't look great though. Actually, it doesn't look bad either. I don't know. You can get a horse on some big standing pose there with it and tail billowing in the wind. I don't know. I take back what I said. The tail articulation is not so bad, but it probably should be ratcheted if you're going to ratchet the other joints. Anyways, the big fun part of this guy is to put Batman on it just like he was in the novel. And let's see if we can get him on there. Yeah, you can. You definitely technically can. I gotta reposition my camera and get his feet in the stirrups and his hands on the reins there. That's, that's the word I remembered it. I'm realizing now that this is why he has thigh swivels, so you can bend the knees for the horse and then you can swivel them. It's just, you see, McFarlane, it's a necessary joint. It's also why he has those loose grip hands and probably why he came with the bat rope accessory kind of thing, because they're already, you know, meant to hold the reins of the horse here. And uh, since that accessory was much thinner than this, I'm sure to think I'm going to be able to squish this into these hands, but I will try. Okay, here's what you guys need to do for this. Take the grip hands off of Batman. Boil them, use a hair dryer on them, do something, soften them up so you can pry them open and then get this rope rein thing in them, which, you know, can be easier if you take it off of the horse. Now, let's put it all back on the figure and the horse and try to get it all together in one big piece. <laughs> it can be done. I guess Batman looks pretty cool, but you're not really going to get the horse into any dynamic poses doing this like it is just a, a balancing act, honestly, once he's up there. Um, still, well, looks pretty darn cool. Anywho, it's scale time. Now, before I take Batman off the horse to do his scale, let's do him on the horse. And Batman riding that horse stands at about 10 and a half inches or 27 centimeters tall. And from head to tail, the horse is about 10 and a quarter inches, 26 and a half ish, 27 centimeters long, depending on, you know, where you determine the end of the tail and the beginning of the head is. But in terms of height, the horse in a neutral pose will come to about uh, seven and a half inches or 19 and a half centimeters to the top of his head there. When you want Batman off the horse, by the way, uh, just take his hands off and leave those on the reins there because they are such a pain to get on and off. And so just, I'll just display him with the fists for the rest of the review. Now, as for everyone else, the Joker stands at about 7 and 8 inches or 18 centimeters tall. Carrie Kelly Robin just a smidge over 5 and a half inches or 14 centimeters. Batman more like 7 and a quarter inches or 18 centimeters there. Superman just a smidge taller. Maybe seven and a third inches, 18 and a half centimeters, it looks like. As always, here's how I scale with the six inch Batman and Spider Man from the Mattel days. And since we've got the characters, why not six inch Superman and Joker from the DC Universe Classics line as well? So you can see not just the size difference between Mattel and McFarlane, but also the design difference between, you know, classic Joker, classic Superman, and what they did with the Dark Knight Returns and their crazy older future designs. And last up here, the McFarlane Superman from Action Comics 1000 and Batman from the Arkham games with their Dark Knight Returns counterparts and Superman Dark Knight Returns is a lot taller. Batman's are about the same height, looks like. 
At the end of the day, friends, these are very good figures, as per usual from McFarlane, though they each also have their sort of, you know, big issues like Superman's head sculpt just being plain ugly, and the Joker having that textured jacket, which is a mismatch for the colors he's done in. I actually think that Carrie Kelly Robin has come out my favorite in terms of the sculpt and the paint being accurate to the source material and her having the best range of articulation out of everybody. But, you know, and the same could be pretty much said for the accessories. Like, uh, they all kind of have their big issues. Uh, Superman doesn't get flying hands. He gets these weird grip hands. And Joker's got a weird squishy knife. You know, Carrie Kelly can't hold her slingshot to make it look like she's actually firing it. And, you know, Batman can't even hold this without prying his hands open because the grips on them are way too tight. And, you know, I, I, you could say these things are nitpicks, but I think, you know, figure not being able to hold his accessory, and especially the, the horse's reins being much thicker than this, um, without, you know, having to pry open his hands and boil them alive is sort of a big issue. If you are a big fan of The Dark Knight Returns, you will probably love these figures. The rest of us have to ask ourselves, though, if this guy is worth it. Or more specifically, this guy is worth $100 because uh, that's what you'll be paying when each figure is uh, 25 at the local Walmart. At least that's what I found them for. And that's before taxes, too. I don't think so. I mean, like, it's a well-detailed enough horse, but it's not that well-detailed or painted. I mean, really what you're paying for is the novelty of getting a horse in a 7-inch scale for your action figures to ride. I mean, unless you've got, like, a really cool horse in this scale already... I'd definitely say go out and get it, but like, I mean, $100, uh, it seems kind of pricey for just a horse if you don't want the Dark Knight figures themselves. However, if you are a Batman fan and you do like these, then I think the set's pretty much worth it. I mean, I'm a little on the fence about it personally, friends, but if you don't have a horse, I say go out and get one and build one. Until next time, peace out, YouTube.